Peace. Good evening, those that are on. I hope you're ready for the word tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you're out there, let me know you can hear me okay, please. We we'll appreciate it. I'm going to wait a few minutes. 707 we'll get this started amen when you're having a blessed day amen praise God thank you ladies let me know you can hear me how many are having a good day amen I'm gonna tell you right now the devil's mad um, it's been a crazy day and I didn't lose it amen I just knew what was going on in the spiritual realm. Praise God, Amen. Praise God that today we're gonna we're gonna shame the devil, Amen. We're gonna shame the devil with the Word of God and uh, empower the the children of God to be, Amen. So we're gonna wait a few minutes. I pray that everybody's having a blessed day so far. You know. Uh, we're gonna wait till about seven or seven. Give some people, give people some time to get on and um, get it moving. Amen. Everybody good? Praise God. Am I the only one? Hallelujah. Amen. I know you're all good. You're in the hands of God. The Bible says that He has us in the palm of His hand, and no one is not just away. Amen. Share this, share this message. Um, I've made it public. Usually, all my stuff is just uh, for my friends, but I made it public because I know some of you share it or send it in Messenger afterwards, and it's they don't receive it. They can't see it because it's just for my friends. So I made the live video today public, so that whoever you send it to um, is able to see it and hear it. Amen. But I pray that you, you share the page, share the message on your page. Amen. You guys hear my dog, Capone? Sometimes he gets excited when I'm sharing a message. He'll throw a little whimper. <laughs> just disregard him. Uh, 
Right now he's laying in the backyard, just chilling on the cool cement. That's what I was looking at. But usually he's laying right next to wherever I'm at. And then so I schooled him earlier. So he better be a good boy, he better be quiet, so hopefully he does. Cheers. I'm excited for the word tonight, man. I, I, I just know that, that God has a word for us. You know, God has a word for us. Um, not just you, but me. Every time I put a message together, it ministers to me as well, you know. And uh, I pray that, that, man, it falls on good soil today. Because this word, this word today is for all of us. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's for all of us. Couple more minutes, and we'll get started on this. We'll get grooving. Grooving, what are we grooving? I'm aging myself. Praise the Lord. But um, we're going to get started in the Book of Acts. You know, if, if you stop it and just, man, just sit back and take a look at what's going on in this world today. You know, everything, you know, uh, we had COVID, now you got the Delta variant, now you got the Delta Plus, pretty soon we're going to have Delta Premier, it's kind of like a tier two credit cards or something, I don't know what's going on out there, but... First John 4.4 4 says, Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Amen? And we've got to honestly believe that. That God is greater no matter what's going on out there. And I'm not saying take take what's going on lightly. You know? But just be mindful. Be cautious. Take care of your body. You know? Um, don't don't run around reckless out there. You know? Um, they had that, that big old event a couple of weeks ago in Chicago that Lollapalooza, whatever it was, event, man, that thing was packed with people. One of my co-workers, um, his son went and got robbed out there. So there was people going in the crowd just pointing guns at people in the crowd. It was a big crowd pointing a gun at them and taking their wallet and phones while they were out there, man. It's crazy. But uh, we have to just be, use wisdom, amen, use wisdom and be mindful. What time is it? Let's see here. 707, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to open with a word of prayer this evening. Father, we just come before you this evening, God, as we thank you, Lord, for this time and this opportunity, God. We ask for the forgiveness of our sins, God, if we said or done anything throughout this day that was not of you, Lord. We ask and pray that you would cover us, Father God, this evening, Father God, that I would decrease and that you would increase, Lord. Just set me aside, Lord, and let your word just be spoken the way you want it to be spoken, God. I pray that every heart and every mind be open and receptive to the word this evening, Father God. Whether they hear it live, Lord, or whether they hear it some other time, God, I pray, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that their heart and their minds be open to receive this word, Father God. I pray that it would equip us, that it would equip us, God, for the task at hand, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Um, we're going to start in the book of Acts, chapter 19, and I'm just going to jump right into it and get to reading, amen, and, and just, just, man, just flow, let the anointing flow, let the Holy Spirit flow, open your hearts, open your minds, and um, the words are here, uh, I'll share the scriptures, but if anybody after this wants the scriptures, if you're not taking notes, you know, just message me, message me and I'll shoot you the scriptures for for today's but it'll be on here you can go on YouTube it'll be on YouTube after we're done here tonight amen the book of Acts chapter 19 verse 1 says now it happened that while Apollos was in Corinth Paul passed through the upper country and came to Ephesus and found some disciples he said to them did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed?" and they said to him on the contrary we have not even heard if there is a Holy Spirit and he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? And they said, Into John's baptism. Verse 4. 
Paul said, John baptized with a baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him, that is, in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and began speaking with tongues and prophesying. There were about twelve men in all. Verse 8, and he entered the synagogue and continued speaking boldly for three months, having discussions and persuading them about the kingdom of God. But when some, but when some were becoming hardened and disobedient, speaking evil of the way before the people, he withdrew from them and took disciples away with him and had discussions daily in the school of Tyrannius. Verse 10, this took place for two years so that all who lived in Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. Verse 11 says, God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul so that the handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirit, evil spirits went out. Amen? Went out. The Bible says in verse 11, God was performing great was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul so that the handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out. Amen. Amen. I titled this message Sons and Daughters of God or Sons and Daughters of Skeva. Amen. Are you a son or a daughter of God? Or are you a son or a daughter of Skeva? And in a minute, we're going to get into that. Amen. We're going to find out who Skeva is. Anybody know who Skeva is? Amen. Um, so the Bible says that Paul was performing, God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. Amen. Jesus' last recorded words have come to be known as part of the Great Commission. But you shall receive power, he says. You shall receive power... When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, He says, You shall be my witness, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. That's Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Amen. He says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. If you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, Amen, the Bible says that, that you will receive power. That's a promise from God that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Amen. And as we get into this message, you're going to find out, wow, am I really walking in the power of God? Amen. Because the Bible tells us, and the words of Jesus in Acts 1 8 says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Amen. The Greek definition of power is dunamis. Dunamis. Amen? Dunamis. And its meaning is strength. Strength. Power. The ability. Inherent power. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature or which a person or thing exerts and puts forth power. Power for performing miracles. That's what power right there in Acts 1.8 means. The Greek word of power is dunamis. Is dunamis. And it's strength. Amen. It's power. The ability. Amen. If inherent power inside of you residing in a thing by virtue or its nature. But then another meaning of it is power for performing miracles miracles amen see jesus said when you receive the holy spirit that you will see this power amen that you will receive the power the same power that jesus walked with you and i have amen he says the power to perform miracles amen the power to perform miracles that's the power that you and i will receive when we receive when we're baptized and we receive the Holy Spirit, we automatically receive this power. He doesn't say some of you. He says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit 
comes upon you. Amen? When you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you will receive power. And we read it earlier when, they, when Paul laid hands and baptized these people in the Holy Spirit, they began speaking with tongues and prophesying. Amen? Immediately, they began to speak with tongues and prophesying. Amen? So, it's not that you're going to get this power later on. It's the minute that you receive the Holy Spirit into your life, you have received this power. The same power that Jesus Christ walks with. Amen? The same power. You and I have that power. Amen? The same power. Amen? The book of Acts is, is the word of God where the men and women took the commission seriously and began to spread the news of the risen Savior to the remote corners of the known world. Amen? They didn't take it lightly. They pressed in. They sought God. And they depended on the Spirit of God that was promised to them. Amen? They depended. These individuals that were around at this time when Jesus ascended into heaven and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, they depended upon God. They sought God. They tapped into God. They depended on that Holy Spirit that was promised to them. Amen? And that's why in the book of Acts, man, the Bible says that they were getting saved by the thousands. And we got to stop and wonder and ask ourselves today, why isn't that happening today? Amen? If we receive that same power, why isn't it happening today? I'm going to tell you why. Because we have powerless Christians. Amen? Powerless Christians walking around saying they're Christian, but they have no power. Why? We're going to get into that. Why don't they have that power? We're going to get into that. Amen? Acts chapter 1 12 through 14 says this. And they returned to Jerusalem from the mountain called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered the city, they went up to the they went to, up to the upstairs room where they were staying. That is Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew. James the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these were continually devoting themselves with one mind to prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Amen. Did you see what they did? They went into the upper room, the Bible says. They entered into the upper room and they devoted themselves to prayer. Amen. We got Christians today, people that say they're Christians. That are walking around prayerless. Amen? Prayerless. They come to God when they have a need. They want prayer when they have a need. Amen? Can I get an amen? Guess what? Not here though, right? Maybe somewhere else. Amen? They come to God when they have a need. They want to pray when they have a need. But they're walking around prayerless. Amen? Prayerless. These individuals that turned the world upside down with the gospel, the Bible says, entered into the upper room. They devoted themselves to prayer. They got into the presence of God so that they could be equipped, prepared, and ready to go forward. They knew that work needed to be done. And they needed the power of God and the Holy Spirit to do what was required of them. Amen? They knew that. How many of you today Ask yourself seriously, how many of you today know that you need the power of God and the power of Holy Spirit to be able to fulfill the calling and the promise that God has for you? Amen. But we don't spend time on prayer. They say, you know what, hey, I spent five minutes. I hear people say, I pray in the shower. You pray in the shower, so you take what? An hour long shower? Because I spend about an hour in prayer a day. If you take a five minute shower and you're only praying in the shower, you're only depositing five minutes with God. And there are 23 hours and 55 minutes in the day left. What's going on those other times? You're giving it to the world? Amen? If you're only depositing $10 in your bank and you have a need and you go to withdraw $200, it ain't going to happen. Because you've only deposited $10 into your bank. 
into your account. How much are you depositing into your spiritual account today? Amen. You've got to ask yourself. Only you know. Only you know. See, these people that shook the world upside down, man. We, we, we should have some radical Christians right now. Radical Christians. The harvest is so ready right now to get people to surrender to Jesus. Amen. But instead, the body is, is, is afraid, walking in fear, being timid. Amen. Being timid. Amen. I posted a video, I think it was yesterday or maybe earlier today, of some individuals that were out there on the street corners by the off ramp getting on the freeway. They were just proclaiming the gospel, man. And, and gang members walked up and got saved. That's what we need. Amen. That's what we need. See, the people aren't going to come to the church. God didn't save you just to sit in the pews. There's a dying generation out there. There's lost and hurting people out there that need Jesus. Amen. God did not save you just to be saved. God did not save you to run after your own desires now. God did not save you to go after worldly things. Amen. I hear messages about prosperity. Amen. God didn't save you to prosper in that sense. He saved you to prosper in Him. To prosper in Him. Not in the worldly things and not in material things. Amen. Can I get an Amen. Don't be quiet on me right now. Praise the Lord. They entered into the upper room. They devoted themselves to prayer. They got into the presence of God so that they can be equipped. Prepared and ready to go forward. They got their marching orders. Amen. They knew that work needed to be done. And they needed the power of God and the Holy Spirit to do what was required of them. Amen. See, in prayer. In prayer. You have your marching orders. And the orders are that you are going to be a witness. Amen. To the remotest part of the world. Amen. He says, go ye out and make disciples of all nations. Disciples of all the people. We have the commission, the great commission to go out and make disciples. So we know that we have to be equipped to do these things. We can't do it on ourselves. Amen. We can't do it on our own. We need the power of God in our life. We need to tap in. See, when you're in the military, when you're in the military, you go through... Eight weeks of basic training, six weeks of basic training. And then after basic training, you go to AIT, which is your advanced individual training. You go through basic training and they prepare you. They prepare you, man. There, there used to be a commercial that says that we do more by 9 a.m. than most people do in the day. That is so true. By 9, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, we were, we were tired out. And we didn't quit till 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. But in all that time in basic training, they're training you. They're training you for battle. They're training you for war. They're training you how to use your weapons. They're training your body to how to be physical and how to endure. Amen? And then you go to AIT, which is Advanced Individual Training. And in there, you get trained for what your MOS is, your method of service. And that's whatever your, whatever your MOS is, whatever your job requirement is going to be in the military. They train you for that. Amen? And they prepare you. They prepare you and they equip you to go out to battle. To defend the United States of America. Amen. When you're in prayer. When you're in the word of God. When you're in the presence of God. You're depending on your spiritual weapons. To go out to battle. Amen. To go out when you go out to witness. Amen. See we are commissioned to go out. You may say but you know what Pastor John. I, I'm not called to do that. You're right. You're not called to do it. Not everybody's called to do it. Everybody is commissioned to do it. The great commission was for everybody. Not just some of us. For everybody. Amen. But you say, may say, I'm not a pastor. You're not a pastor. You're right. I'm not an evangelist. You're right. You're not an evangelist. Maybe you don't have a... That's just a title. We are all ministers of the gospel. Amen. We should all be sharing the gospel. Amen. The harvest is ready, but the labors are few this evening. Amen. Not enough labors out there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can I get a witness? Praise God. Amen. Don't get quiet on me now. In order for all of us to do God's work, we need to get into His Word, His presence, so that we can be equipped and know that God that we serve, know the power that we have, know the Son who the Son of God is. Hearing about Him isn't enough. You have to get to know Him. Amen? Just going to church isn't enough. Just hearing the Word of God isn't enough. 
The Bible says in the book of James, don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. Apply that word to your life. Amen. Just hearing about God isn't enough. Just hearing about Jesus isn't enough. Just hearing about the Holy Spirit isn't enough. Amen. Isn't enough. You have that power, but you got to tap into it. Amen. You got to plug into the spiritual outlet, which is Jesus, which is God, which is the Holy Spirit. You got to plug yourself into them. Amen. So that you're empowered all the time. Amen. To do the work of God. Amen. Now, here's where it's going to get good. Listen to this. We're going to go to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, verse 11. Through 12. Listen to this, amen. The preachers of the gospel in the book of Acts, chapter 9, 11, 12, were sent forth to carry on a war against Satan. And therefore Christ went forth conquering and to conquer. The casting of evil spirits of those that were possessed was one instance of Christ's victory over Satan. But to show in how many ways Christ triumphed over that great enemy, we have here in these verses two remarkable instances of the conquest of Satan, not only to those who were violently possessed by him, but those who were voluntarily devoted to him. Listen, verse 13. But also, some of the Jewish exorcists who went out from place to place attempted to name the Lord of Jesus over those who had the evil spirit, saying, I order you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Amen. See, the disciples had went out. And they were just, man, they were just performing miracles after miracles. They were casting demons out. They were just casting them out. And, and people were getting laid out. People were getting delivered. People were getting set free. But here... The Bible says some, some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempted to name of, to, to the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had the evil spirit saying, I order you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Amen. Here is the confusion. Some of Satan's servants, some vagabond Jews, they were exorcists. Who made use of Christ's name profanely and wickedly in the diabolical enhancements. They were trying to use the name of Jesus. But they were made to pay dearly for their presumption. The general character of those who were guilty of this presumption, they were Jews, but vagabond Jews, were the Jews of the nation and religion, but went about from town to town to get money by conjuring up. They were defrauding the people. They were defrauding the people from town to town. Amen? They strolled about to tell people their fortunes and pretended by spells and charms to cure diseases and bring people to themselves that were melancholy or distracted. They called themselves exorcists because in doing their tricks they used forms of adjuration by such and such commanding names. Now listen. Verse 14. Now there were seven sons of Sceva a Jewish priest that was doing this. Seven sons of Sceva. Sceva was a Jewish priest. Amen? And he was a ringleader. And the Bible says, well, first of all, let me tell you what the definition of Sceva means. It means a mind reader. A certain chief priest residing at Ephesus that was a mind reader. Amen? He was, he was practicing a form of witchcraft. Amen. Verse 14. Acts. We're still in the book of Acts. 19 verse 14. Their father was a chief of priests. Head of one of the 24 courses of priests. One would think the temple would find both employment and encouragement enough for the sons of a chief priest. He was a big shot. Amen. He was a big shot. If they had been twice as many, but probably it was in vain rambling humor that led them to turn deceitful and wander all the world to cure mad folks. They were going after the sick. They were, they were praying on the sick. They were praying on the hurting. Amen? The irreverence that they were guilty of 
they took upon them to call over evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus but not as those who had had reverence see these people didn't reverence the name Jesus but they try to use the name Jesus amen for Christ had a confidence in his name but as those who were willing to try all the methods to carry on their wicked trade they tried to use the name Jesus to benefit themselves so they were trying to cast out these spirits amen you have to understand something let us not be deceived today God is not mocked nor shall the glorious name of Jesus be prostituted to such a vile purpose as this what communion does Christ have with Belial these were men of Satan's trying to gain off of the name of Jesus for their own purpose amen they tried to cast out demons in the name of Jesus but listen the evil spirit says to them Jesus I know Paul I know but who are you amen they said they went up to this individual and then they said I cast you out in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches amen I cast you out to this demon possessed individual in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches the sons of Sceva seven sons of Sceva were out there doing this and the evil spirit says Jesus I know Paul I know but who are you amen who are you who are you see what they were saying is I know that Jesus had conquered principalities and powers and that Paul has authority in his name to cast out devils but what power have you to command us in his name or who gave you such power what have you to do to declare the power of Jesus or to take his covenant and commands into your mouths seeing that you hate his instructions with disobedience amen they're asking them the evil spirits are asking these sons of Sceva who are you see I know that Jesus has the power I know that Paul has been given the power because of Jesus but what power do you have what power do you have to command us now you got to remember these are the evil spirits speaking to the sons of Sceva what power do you have what authority do you have to use the name of Jesus and command us amen what authority you know why they were asking that because they knew who Jesus was they knew who Paul was but they also knew that the sons of Sceva that they were not children of God amen that they were sons of Sceva who was a Jewish priest practicing exorcism and they belong to that occult amen they belong to that occult and they were asking and the demons began to address them who are you who are you to take this covenant and commands into your mouth seeing that you hate his he's talking about Jesus instructions with disobedience amen with disobedience and that's why we are what we have powerless Christians walking around today because they don't tap into the things of God amen they don't tap into the things of God they don't reverence Jesus Christ like they're supposed to amen they're Christians they go to church on Sundays but they don't tap into God they don't plug into the source of the power amen they don't tap into the word they don't get into prayer they don't get into the presence of God so when you're out there you're walking around powerless today I was talking to an individual amen and I was telling that individual how to pray over somebody what to do and how to command the spirits to flee and their response was I'm not strong enough to do that Wow a Christian 
I'm not strong enough to do that. Amen? I'm not strong enough to do that, they said. And I left it at that. I left it at that. And I prayed for this individual and I asked God to give him the power, give him the boldness. Amen? Because you and I, we have the same power as Jesus Christ. Amen? We have the same power because the Holy Spirit has come upon us. He says, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will receive power. We should not be powerless Christians. Amen? We don't have the power, just like the sons of Sceva didn't have the power. And the demon said, who are you? I know who Paul is. I know who Jesus is. But who are you? Amen? Who are you? To try to command us to come out of this individual when you don't even apply the word of God to your life. When you're walking around in disobedience. Amen. When you're living the life the way that you want to live it. Not the way that God is telling us to live it. Not the way that the word of God instructs us to live it. But you're living it the way that you want to live it. Amen. Who are you? How do the demons talk to you? Amen. Do they know who you are in Christ? Or are you walking around powerless? Are you a son or a daughter of God? Or are you a son or a daughter of Skeva this evening? Amen. I pray, I pray that you're a son and a child of God. Amen. Amen. See, just because we go to church doesn't give us the power. Just because we hear the word, it doesn't give us the power. We receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and we continue to tap into God. We continue to tap into His Word. We apply that Word to our lives because we are obedient individuals and we are now walking with the power of God in our lives. But if you're walking without prayer, without applying the Word, and disobedient, I'm going to tell you right now, when you address somebody that's got a spirit within them, that spirit's going to look at you and say, Who are you? Who are you? I know who Jesus is. I know who Paul is. See, you can't run off of the shirt tail of Paul. Amen? You got to know who you are. You got to know the power that you possess. Amen? You have to know that you have the power and the authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and no harm is going to come your way. Amen? You have to know. You have to know that I can't do it. See, the, lady, the individual that I was speaking today said that I'm not strong enough to do that. Let me tell you this. She says, I'm not strong enough to do that. And in a sense, she was right. We're not strong enough to do that. 2 Corinthians uh, 3, 5 says this, but that, but that, not that we are adequate in ourselves as to consider anything having come from ourselves, but our adequacy is from God. See, we are inadequate within ourselves. So in a sense, that individual is right. They were inadequate to do it but our adequacy comes from God. Amen? Because we have received power when the Holy Spirit came upon us. He didn't say some of you might receive power or maybe you will receive power. He says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Amen? Amen? We should be empowered individuals. Amen? Amen? The Spirit gave him a reply. I know who Jesus is. I know who Paul is. But who are you? Who are you to command us to come out of here? Who are you to use the name of Jesus when you don't even follow his instructions and you walk in disobedience? You know what the Word of God says after that? That those spirits came out of that individual and jumped into them. Amen? Jumped into them. That they took off running. Amen? You and I are in power. We have the power. We don't want to walk up to somebody and lay hands on somebody and don't even believe in the power of our prayer. See, if you're going to lay hands on somebody and you're going to pray for somebody and you're going to anoint somebody, you best believe in the power of your prayer. Because whatever spirit is inside of them, you run the risk of that spirit saying to you, Who are you? I know Jesus. I know Paul. I know Pastor John. But who are you? And that spirits, spirit, spirit, 
you run the risk of them jumping into you. Just like the sons of Sceva. Amen? Just like the sons of Sceva. Amen? Psalms 50, 16 through 17 says this. But to the wicked, God says, what right do you have to tell of my statutes and to make my covenant and to take my covenant in your mouth? For you yourself hate discipline and you throw my words behind you. Amen. Ooh. Let me share that again. He says, but to the wicked, God says, what right what right do you have to tell of my statute and to take my covenant into your mouth verse 14 says for you yourself hate discipline and you throw my words behind you amen that's heavy what right he says what right do you have to go try and pray for somebody what right do you have to speak the name of Jesus amen over somebody <laughs> for you yourself he discipline and you throw my words behind you you see that's what the sons of Sceva did they were trying to use the name of Jesus when they were the dis disobedient individuals practicing exorcism mind reading taking advantage of the people pretending to cure them of their diseases diseases amen but you have to understand that those spirits they're not stupid amen they know who is who in christ they know while you and i sleep at night they, they don't sleep they're always looking for an avenue on how to get somebody. Amen? Just like today. Today was a crazy day. And I knew it was because the word that I was going to share today. And I didn't lose it. I didn't get frustrated. I kept chuckling throughout the day. I kept chuckling. I'm like, man, this word is going to hit. Amen? Because you have to understand. Are you a son or a daughter of God? Or are you a son or a daughter of Sceva? Do the enemy, does the enemy know who you are? Amen. The way he knows Jesus, the way he knows Paul, the way he knew the disciples, Peter and everybody else, does the enemy know who you are or do they laugh at you like they did to the seven sons of Sceva? And he said, wait a minute, who are you? Who are you? Amen. See, we can't have powerless Christians, especially in a time like this. We have to have people that are tapping in through the power of God, tapping in through prayer, tapping in through reading of the word, tapping in through applying the word, tapping in through obedience, amen? Tapping in. So when the time comes, we're ready to go. See, the Bible says that they went up to the upper room and they tapped into the presence of God because they knew that they were going to need God and the Holy Spirit for the job that was required of them. You and I, this evening, from the day that you were called, have a task. Everybody has purpose. Everybody has a destiny. Everybody has been called by God. Amen? The Bible says in John chapter 15, Jesus says, You didn't call me. I called you. I chose you, Jesus said. You didn't choose me. I chose you. And if you're serving the Lord today, you're part of that plan. You're part of this great commission. Remember, you may feel that you're not called to do it. You're right. You're not called. You're commissioned. You're commanded to go out and make disciples of all nations. You're commanded to go out and cast out all spirit. You're commanded to go heal the sick. Amen? You're commanded by God. Amen? But you can't do it on your own. Second Corinthians 3, 5 says that not that we are adequate within ourselves, but our adequacy comes from God. Amen? He, he told us that when you receive power, when you receive the Holy Spirit, that you will receive power. Amen? That you will receive power. Why are you walking around as a powerless Christian today? Amen? Why couldn't the person that I was talking to earlier today say, you know what, Pastor John, you're right. I'm going to go lay hands. I'm going to anoint them. 
then I'm going to pray over them. Why did they tell me they're not strong enough to do it? A Christian! A Christian! That they're not strong enough to do it. Because they're depending upon their own ability. They're depending upon their own power. They don't understand that they receive power. Amen? Don't wait to the spirits ask you. Who are you? By what authority do you have to command us to flee? Don't wait till you go pray for somebody that's sick and the sickness doesn't flee because you're powerless. Amen? So you can't just call on God for prayer when you have a need. And then when God answers that need, you go back to your old self again. Go back to a mediocre Christian. God didn't raise any mediocre Christians. God empowered the body of Christ. Amen? He empowered us. In Psalms 50, 16 and 17 says it, but to the wicked God says, what right, what right do you have to tell of my statue and to take my covenant in your mouth? For you yourself hate discipline and you throw my words behind you. Remember I said in the military, you're in basic training. Can you imagine if I would have went through basic training and I didn't take heed to what they were teaching us? Amen. And when, when I was there in basic training, it was in 1980, and it was at the time that, I don't know, some of you don't remember, some of you do, kind of aging myself, but it was at the time that uh, Iranian had some hostages in Iran. And the military, we went on red alert, and they told us, call your parents, because um, you don't know when you're going to call them again. Because we were, we were we were equipped, we were ready to go. But can you imagine had we gone down there? And I didn't practice. I didn't take heed to the instructions that were given to us through that basic training. Can you imagine what would have happened out there, thrown into war? Amen. Can you imagine if I didn't tap into the resources that they gave us, the training that they gave us? Can you imagine what would have happened? And so it is with spirituality. If you don't tap into the things of God, if you don't pray, then you're going to be a victim of prey. Amen? Something's going to prey on you. If you don't pray, you're going to be a victim of prey. I'm talking about P-R-E-Y. Pray. Amen? If you don't spend time with God, and your child gets sick, God forbid, and you don't feel empowered to be able to lay hands on your children. Amen. You know that my grandkids and even my five-year-old grandson, when they get sick, they call me. They call me because they believe in the power of prayer. They call me and they say, Papa, uh, I got this going on. I got that going on. Even Cameron, my five-year-old man, he calls me. Papa, this is happening, I don't have stomach hurts. And I tell him, I says, look, I want you to do this. I want you to take your right hand and I want to, I want you to put it right where the pain is. I want you to put it right where the pain is. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Amen? And they pray it. And then a couple of hours later, they'll call me saying they feel better. Thank you for the prayers, Papa. Because the power of prayer, amen? Because we tap into the resources, Amen? We tap into the resources and my grandkids have the faith to know that prayer works. They have the faith to know that prayer works. There's power in prayer. And they know that I can call my papa and my papa's going to pray for me. Amen? And he's going to lay hands on me through the phone. He's going to lay hands on me through my hands. Amen? They know that. My grandkids know that. But can you imagine? You want to pray for somebody but you feel I'm not strong enough. You've already walked into it with doubt. I don't feel that I could do this. You can't do it. You've got to be dependent upon the Holy Spirit, upon the power that Jesus said that we're going to receive. When we are baptized and we will receive the Holy Spirit, amen, you've got to receive that power and know that we walk in the power and the authority that Jesus walked in, amen? You can't be timid because then you'll become a casualty of war. 
This is a war we're in, people. We are in a spiritual battle right now, amen? All you got to do is take a look around and see around. We are in a spiritual battle right now. There is spiritual warfare going on right now, amen? The body, people of the body of Christ are getting hit, amen? Children of members of the body of Christ are getting hit, amen? You don't know how many people in these last couple of weeks have contacted me and that their child or, or somebody in their family, Christians, I'm talking about Christians, where their kids are in the hospital because they overdosed. The enemy is out right now. He's out. And we are in a battle where we got to step up and step into the presence of God and begin to intercede on behalf of the people. Amen? Because you have to understand the place, the realm that we're in right now. But we can't be powerless individuals. See, we're the sons and daughters of God or you're a son, daughter of Skella. Amen. Skeva served the enemy. His children served the enemy. Practicing witchcraft. Satanists. Amen. Amen. You see, church, we can't stand here and try to do God's work. If you are not God's children, and by that I mean men and women of obedience to God's ways and God's word, there's no other way that you could get there. To get that full anointing, to get that full power, you cannot just call on the name of Jesus or call out the name of Jesus to do His work if you are not living as we are supposed to. That means in all areas of your life, amen? Just like He said in Psalms, but to the wicked, He says, What right do you have to tell of my statutes and to take my covenant in your mouth for you yourself hate discipline and you throw my words behind you. Amen? Come on now. The people of God went into the upper room. They were devoted to prayer. They had the great commission to fulfill. That great commission still stands today. And so do we. But if we don't get into the, our upper room, if we don't devote ourselves to prayer, if we don't come into one accord and one mind, how can we be as effective as they were back then God is the same yesterday today and forever he is still wanting to pour out and to do great and mighty miracles amen he hasn't stopped church his church has stopped doing what is required of us amen his church has stopped doing what is required of us how many still have prayer meetings. Our church used to pray every Saturday morning at 6 a.m. for an hour. And we used to have these prayer meetings. And out of the congregation, you'd have probably three or four faithful people show up. Sometimes on a good day, you may have maybe five or six show up to the prayer meeting. Now that's corporate prayer. That's the body coming together. Amen? And people would say, it's Saturday morning. Why well, can't get up at 6 in the morning? Well, you get up early in the morning for your job. Monday to Friday, you have no problem getting up early to go to work. But you can't get up at 6 a.m. to pray? Amen? Don't you know that it was it was God that gave you that job? Not your own doing. Amen? See, we have our prayer life, our own individual prayer life. But you got to have corporate prayer. you got to have corporate prayer where the body comes together. And, and it was, you know... We kept pressing in every Saturday. Sometimes there would be just be two or three of us, four or five of us, six of us. And though there were more people in the congregation, they wouldn't come. They wouldn't come. Amen? And we have to stop and ask ourselves that why isn't the way that it was back in those days, why can't we have that today? Because people are not walking in the power. People are not being like they were when they went into the upper room. One accord, one mind, one spirit, empowered, equipping themselves. You know the only unanswered prayer of Jesus is found in John chapter 17? He says where the body becomes one. He prays for the body to become one, the body to become one. There's so much division in churches today, man. So much division. 
this church trying to do all that church, this church trying to do all that church, this church having a car show to try to outdo the other church that had a car show, this church trying to be a big name man for entertainment in the church, man, get away from that. It's the word of God and the word of God only, amen? Preach the word. Get away from all that other circus atmosphere. Preach the word. Bring your people together and get into corporate prayer and preach the word of God. Amen. Have altar calls. Bring them to the altar. Let them die to themselves and live for Christ. Amen. Let them die. What church is I'm doing that today? Churches are having car shows after car shows. And that's okay. But if you're having a car show just to have a car show because the other church down the road had a car show and you're not giving the gospel. And I'm not talking about the entertainment of rappers coming because rappers are out there. Christian rappers adorned with all this jewelry, gold on them, just like a worldly rapper. Come on now. What's going on out there? What are you doing? What are you doing? If you're having a car show just to have a car show because somebody else had a car show and you're not bringing the gospel. And I'm not talking about entertainment from these rappers. Because all they're doing it for is for the camera and the limelight as well. Not all of them, but some of them. And you can tell because you see them all adorned with the jewelry. Just like the world in the Amen. But, the power, we're going to get ready to close this up. The power of the Holy Spirit was not designed solely for the first century church. Rather, all Christians are indwelt by the power. And thus have this power available. However, living the Christian life under the Spirit's power must not be thought of as simply allowing the Spirit to take control while the believer does nothing. Amen? Let me read it again. However, living the Christian life under the Spirit's power must not be thought of as simply allowing the Spirit to take control while the believer does nothing. The believer must still live the Christian life Though he does it through the Spirit's power. Amen. Can I get a witness? Can I get a praise the Lord? Amen. And here we go. The Christian who struggles. In his own strength. To live. Will fail. Amen. The Christian who struggles. In his own length. In his own strength to live. Will fail. He must be faith appropriate daily. This means that the, the believer trusts the Spirit to empower him in specific instances. There is no secret formula, church, that makes the Spirit's power available. It is simply reliance on the Spirit to help, devoting yourself to prayer, and coming in one mind and one accord. Amen. You want to see some true signs and wonders? You want to see some miracles? Begin to pray for the body of Christ to come together in one mind, in one accord. You know what that means? With this church and that church and another church can come together. And pray. And pray. And pray. You know that there are pastors that won't have nothing to do with other pastors because of who they are and because of their walk. Amen? I know that. There's pastors that, that don't like me. Amen? When I see them, I go out of my way to shake their hand. Amen? I go out of my way. And they can talk bad about me. That's okay. That's okay. That's, that just shows me where their spirit's at and their walk is, amen? I'm not talking about pastors. I'm talking about pastors. Amen? I'm nobody mighty, but I know who I am in Christ. Amen? I know my walk. I know who I am. I know. I'm not holier than thou, no. I just know that I devote myself to prayer. I read my word. I study my word. I apply my word as much as I can. Do I fall short? Yes, we all fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Why do you think that when I open up a prayer... I ask God to forgive us of our sins. Of anything that we've said or done throughout this day, it wasn't of Him. Because you've got to be confession to be able to come back to God. Because you know what? We fall short throughout the day. A thought within our mind. Amen? 
But the Christian who struggles in his own strength to live will fail. We, we, you and I, must be faith appropriate daily. That means that the believer trusts the Spirit to empower him in specific instances. That when we know, because of who we are in Christ, that I can walk up to somebody and I can pray for somebody, and I know that at that moment the Holy Spirit is going to flow and do what he needs to do. Not John, the Holy Spirit. He's going to empower me to do what needs to be done. Amen? There's no secret form in them, my brothers and sisters. That makes the Spirit's powers available. It is simply reliance on the Spirit to help. Devoting yourself to prayer, coming in one mind and one accord. Amen? Can I get an amen this evening? Praise the Lord. I pray this evening that, that you share this message. That you share this message because people need to hear it. People need to hear it. Amen? And those of you that chimed in or turned, came in later, you can see it again on my page or you can go on YouTube. It will be on YouTube. Uh, punch in my name, type in my name, J-O-H-N-A-R-C-E-S-R, John R.C. Senior, and my message will be on there, but it'll be on my Facebook as well. Share the message, man. Share the message. Send it to somebody because people need to hear this word. Amen? We are either sons and daughters of God or sons and daughters of Scala. There is no in-between. There is no in-between. I honestly believe that God is speaking. Remember a while back we talked about, are you straddling the fence? Who are you really serving, amen? And I believe that God is speaking. God is speaking to His church right now, to the body of Christ. Who do you truly serve? Who do you truly belong? And let me finish this one. I'm going to read the scripture again. Psalms 50, 16-17. But to the wicked God says, What right do you have to tell of my statutes and to make my take my covenant into your mouth? For you yourselves hate discipline, and you throw my words behind you. You know what that means? You're walking in disobedience. What right do you have if you're walking in disobedience? What right do you have if you're not applying my words to your life? Amen? What right? And with that, we're going to pray this evening. Amen? We're going to close. <clears throat> I'm going to already say this prayer. Maybe you're out there. And maybe something I said ministered to you, spoke to you. Amen? And maybe you're not as powerful as you thought you were. Maybe you're walking around as a powerless Christian. But today is the day. Today is the day and the opportunity to make it right. Amen. To make it right with God and know who you are in God. Don't be like the individual that I was talking to earlier that said, I'm not strong enough to do that. You're right. We're not strong enough. We're inadequate within ourselves. Our accuracy comes from God. Amen. So I pray for that individual. And I pray that God will help her understand the power that she has. And that she will walk in that authority and the boldness. Amen. So let's just go before the Lord as I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sir. Repeat this prayer with me if you want. You don't have to. That's between you and God. Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight. I thank you for this word that was spoken tonight. Lord, I ask for forgiveness of my sins. Maybe I haven't been reading like I should and applying the word like I should. Maybe I haven't been praying as I should. Lord, I don't want you to speak to me as you spoke in Psalms chapter 50, asking me what right do I have. Lord, so I ask for forgiveness this evening, God, for my sins, for falling short, God. I recommit my life to you tonight, God, and I ask and pray for your help, Lord. I receive your Holy Spirit into my life from this day forward. I ask you to help me walk according to your will so that I will not be a powerless Christian, but know who I am in Christ and walk with power and authority that has been given to me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, this evening for this time in the Word, God. I ask and pray, God, this Word, Lord, needs to be spoken and needs to be heard by many, Lord. But I pray for those that heard it tonight and maybe those that hear it at another time, God. 
that they would understand the severity of this right now, Lord, the battle that we're in, the spiritual warfare that we're in, God, and that they would take to heart, Lord, the power that we receive when we receive your Holy Spirit, God, that we are empowered individuals, Lord. The Word says that you have given us the power and the authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and no harm will come our way, God. I pray that we walk in that power this evening, God. That we walk in that power, Lord. That we would conquer. Conquer all that comes our way, Father God. That we would not be dependent on anybody else. Not our pastors and not our leaders, Lord. That we would be dependent upon you and your Holy Spirit, Father God. Your Son, Jesus, Lord. So that when we go out and pray for somebody, the Spirit's going to say, Wait a minute. I know Paul and I know Jesus, but who are you? That they recognize who we are, Father God. We pray this this evening, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. Amen. I pray that you share this message. That you hear this message again. Hear it again until you get it. That you would not walk as a powerless Christian. That you are a son and a daughter of God. And not a son and daughter of Scala. Amen. In Jesus name. God bless you guys. I love you. Anybody got any questions? Inbox me. Shoot me a message. God bless you guys.